Hey, nursing students. I know that preparing for the NCLEX can be downright stressful, especially with all those new scary NGN style questions. But don't worry. Today, I'm gonna break down each question style type so that you know exactly how to best tackle them during your NCLEX exam. With each NGN style, we will also work on an example together to test your knowledge and to get comfortable with the new process. You see, the new generation NCLEX, or simply the NGN, has six different styles of question. These include drag and drop, drop down, multiple choice, multiple response, highlight, and even bow tie style questions. And each style of questions has additional subcategories. Now I know it can be very scary, so let's break down each one. Let's move on to the infamous bow tie style questions. These questions can be a little bit difficult, but it's really focusing on your clinical judgment. So when you encounter one of these questions, you must drag and drop choices in a series of response targets to continue forward. Now let's walk through an example together. All right, now for the infamous bow tie questions. Let's make it simple and break it down. The question's asking us to complete the diagram by dragging the choices to identify, number one, the condition, number two, the actions to address the condition, or basically how to save the client's life, and then lastly, number three, the parameters to monitor for to keep the client safe. So in terms of the problem here, let's look into the case study and find keywords that risk safety. So we see that the client returns for a follow-up visit one week after taking a really long antibiotic. But just let the name help you. The word sulfa is in this antibiotic. So we know sulfas can be very toxic. And she took it for UTI. Now let's click under tab number one and see what else we find. Now in tab number one of the nurse's notes, we see number one, a new onset of symptoms. We see urinary burning and frequency. Now to me, that sounds a lot like a UTI, so that's expected. We also see the client reporting itchiness of the skin without a rash. Now, uh-oh, that sounds like a negative response to a medication. Next, we see dark urine, and oh boy, this looks like toxic kidneys. Next is increasing fatigue. All right, now I'm definitely thinking toxicity. And we also see abdominal cramps, clay-colored stools. Now, it all started about two days ago, and the itching and fatigue have gotten far worse. The next thing we're looking at is yellowing of the eyes, not present several days ago. So this definitely looks like the liver is getting toxic, showing up as jaundice on the skin. So again, I'm thinking toxicity more than ever. Now let's click over to tab number two. The blood pressure has increased just a little bit. And the temperature has increased into a fever, which is weird because the antibiotics should have killed the bacteria from that UTI. Okay, now for the solution. Before looking at the answer options, base everything on data. Simply think what kills or harms the client first. So as mentioned before, we have to think toxicity. As the question stated, number one, itchy skin without a rash. Number two is that dark urine and clay colored stools. And the last one here is the yellowing of the eyes showing the liver is probably toxic. Okay, now let's look at the options here. So the first option is incorrect. An allergic reaction would show up with hives all over and even a rash on the skin, so we see itchy skin without a rash. Now, the next option is incorrect because anaphylaxis is an extreme version of an allergic reaction. So we would see the lungs closing up and even hear wheezing, but we really don't see that here in the data. Now, moving on to option three, this one is also incorrect, but this one was really close because in tab number two, the temperature is increased, showing the medication is probably not working. But this can also be due to the toxicity. Now, option four is correct. Drug-induced hepatitis. So again, let the name help you. Itis means inflammation or even infection. And hepat means the liver. So this mostly aligns with all the data shown in the tabs of the case study. The biggest thing that gave this one away is the yellowing of the eyes that shows liver toxicity from that jaundice but also clay-colored stools, which may be due to the buildup of bile inside the body, as well as jaundice, the yellowing of the skin, often occurring with clay-colored stools. Now, in terms of the actions, before looking at the options, think about the data in the case study, then think about actions that are gonna save the client's life. So the labs confirm toxicity, and think about the ABCs of the liver. So A is for albumin. Remember, albumin attracts water and calcium, and without it, it leads to ascites, a big fluid-filled abdomen. Now, B is for bile, which I call the bile bus. It transports bilirubin, basically dead RBCs, out of the body and into the potty. 
With low bile, we can transport those RBCs, and then they end up building up, reflecting on the skin as yellowing of the skin, noted as jaundice. And then C is for coagulation factors, huge bleed risk. So we have to assess PT and INR. Now let's look at the options here. So option one is correct. We need a complete metabolic panel, or basically blood labs. It's going to give us an accurate look at what's going on in the liver. Now option two is incorrect because the emergency room is not the best option. Since the client is stable and really nothing's going to kill the client immediately. Now if the client had difficulty breathing or is getting worse, then that would be an ABC issue. Now option three is also incorrect, but this one was a little bit close because the high temperature in tab number two. But before giving IV antibiotics, we have to check for the culture and sensitivity test first. Because remember, on the NCLEX, culture and sensitivity comes before giving more antibiotics. Now option four is correct because anticipating the order of PT and INR is the best. Because remember, the liver makes coagulation factors. So with damaged or inflamed liver, we have a huge risk for bleeding. Okay, now let's move on to the parameters to monitor. So before looking at the options, think about the data in the case study. What do we wanna to monitor to keep the client safe? So now let's look at the options. Option one is correct. Since the liver is affected, we need to monitor the liver enzymes just to make sure it's not getting worse. Option two is incorrect. Now this one was a little bit close because the yellowing of the eyes, but there's no indication that the client has vision problems, only yellowing of the eyes, which is simply a liver issue. Option number three is also incorrect. Another close one because of the dark urine. But once again, the dark urine is likely to the build of a dead RBCs, resulting in jaundice in the skin, and now dark urine. Now what about option four, daily weight? Well, this one is correct. Now I know it sounds weird, but remember the ABCs of the liver. A is for albumin, and remember A for albumin, A attracts water. So it retains fluid inside the blood vessels. Now, since we don't have albumin here, well then all that water escapes the blood vessels and now goes into the third spacing, mainly into the abdomen, resulting in aseity. And so simply think weight gain equals water gain. Now what about option five? This one is incorrect, but man, it was a close one. Remember, creatinine over 1.3 is bad kidney, but there's no lab data or even signs and symptoms that support kidney problems. All we have here is dark urine. Thanks for watching today's video. Remember to type simplelearsing.com forward slash YouTube into your search bar and join well over 1 million students hacking their nursing school system.